In this video, I'm going to be talking about the difference between sigma bonds and pi bonds. This does require us to think about hybridization. So up here in the corner, I'm just going to put a reference for us so that we can quickly assign hybridization to any of the atoms in these molecules that we're going to work with. Remember our quick reference is that there's one s orbital, there are three p orbitals and five d orbitals in any given energy level. And to quickly determine the hybridization of any atom in a molecule, we'll just simply count the numbers of areas of electrons around that particular atom, correspond that to the hybridization. So let's say we had an atom that had six areas of electrons around it in a molecule. We would count one, two, three, four, five, six. It um, is hybridized using a total of one s orbital, three p orbitals, and two d orbitals, which is called sp3d2 hybrid. So let's take a look at this example right here. It's a molecule that I've drawn with some very long bonds because we're going to be drawing some stuff right over the top of it. And what we're going to do is start by assigning hybridization to every single one of the atoms in this molecule. We'll go ahead and start with this hydrogen atom up here. The hydrogen atom has one area of electron density around it, um, which corresponds to just an s orbital. It's actually not even hybridized. So I'm going to make a note of that right there. This particular hydrogen has a total of one s orbital that is being used for bonding. I do want to distinguish what I'm writing there from one s, which is referring to principal quantum number n. And over here, I'm talking about the quantity one, one of one total s orbital. Now, if you look, all of the hydrogen atoms in the molecule are exactly the same. So we're only going to label this one right here, but they all are just having a single s orbital. Now let's look at our carbon atom right here. This carbon atom has three areas of electrons around it. So one, two, three areas of electrons. That is sp2 hybrid. And there is one sp2 hybrid orbital for every single area of electron. So there's one right here, there's another one right here, and there's another one right here. So this carbon atom has a total of three sp2 hybrids and our other carbon atom is exactly the same. It also has three areas of electrons and three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Let's draw all of these orbitals into the molecule. So we're gonna draw the s orbitals around the hydrogen atoms and we're gonna draw these sp2 orbitals around the carbons. And let's just go ahead and start with the s orbitals because those are the easiest ones to draw. Um, let's go over here as a reminder, the s orbitals are just spherical shape. The nucleus is in the center. So I'm going to use a highlighter. I'm going to make all the s orbitals green. And I'm going to try to extend the s orbitals about halfway down the bond line. So in green around this hydrogen, we're just assuming that the symbol H is being used to represent the nucleus of the atom. And so here is the s orbital for all of the hydrogen atoms. Like that. That one didn't go very far down the bond line, but you get the idea. And we have one more down here. So these are the S orbitals around each one of the hydrogens, and these are the orbitals that they're gonna be using to bond. So now let's draw the sp2 orbitals. Um, the, the shape of an sp2 orbital is something that we haven't talked about yet, but if you recall, I did tell you that it was a hybrid. So that meant, means that the sp2 orbital is sort of a cross between an S and a P. For reference, this is what a p orbital looks like. An sp2 orbital um, looks like this, it, with a nucleus right there. So it has a one, we call it a lobe, that matches the standard p orbital, and the other side, which is kind of round and stubby, which matches an, matches an s orbital. And this is the shape not only for sp2, but also for sp3 and also for sp. The, um, again, the nucleus is in this area right here. And this, right, the longer side, the lobe, is what I like to call the business side of this orbital. So that's the side that is actually doing the bonding. So let's draw the three sp2 orbitals onto the carbon atoms. And I'm gonna use the highlighter again, but this time let's say I'm gonna use pink. So I'm gonna start by drawing the business end first and notice that I'm drawing a little bit of overlap with the hydrogen's S orbital, that's intentional. And so I'm actually, I think for the sake of clarity in this, I'm not gonna draw the little stubby lobe on the sp2 orbital, at least not initially, maybe I'll go back and do it later. So I've got that like that, the overlap. 
And so maybe I'll try to kind of just squeeze in those little stubby lobes. I just feel like they make it look messy. And so now we're gonna do the same thing for the second carbon. Um, we'll go ahead and draw the overlap right there. So there's one of the sp2 orbitals and then here's our second one and here is our third and then here's the little stubby lobes so um the sigma bond now we're ready to talk about the sigma bond the sigma bond is what occurs as a result of this direct overlap between two orbitals that are lying along the bond line in between any two atoms. So the sigma bond is this right here, the direct, we call this a head-to-head -head overlap that exists along the line of the bond, and it happens as a result of this direct contact and direct overlap between any two orbitals. So let's define that down here. A sigma bond, which is sometimes abbreviated with the actual letter sigma, is a direct or head-to-head -head overlap of orbitals. And it exists along the bond line. So again, that's the area of space that exists directly between the two atoms that are in the bond. And let's draw a few arrows to point out where the actual sigma bond is. Every single single bond is a sigma bond. So all of the single bonds in any molecule, this molecule or any molecule, are sigma bonds. And we can make a note over there. Single bonds are sigma bonds. Each sigma bond has a total of two electrons in it. So let's see if we can find a way to fit that in, in as well. Sing, single, single bond is a sigma bond, and a sigma bond has a total of two electrons. So that means we have two electrons in this space right here. We have two electrons right here, and two right here, and two right here, and we have two right here. However, if you're thinking and you're clever, you might say, but this is a double bond and a double bond has a total of four electrons. So if there are only two electrons in this sigma bond, then where are the other two electrons? And that's, um, that is what we're gonna talk about next. So when we did this hybridization to make this particular hybrid orbitals, we used one s orbital and we used two of the p orbitals, but we left one of the p orbitals unhybridized. And that unhybridized p orbital, which we're gonna draw in blue, that unhybridized p orbital, oops, is just hanging out on each carbon atom like this. So here's one of the unhybridized p orbitals, and then carbon number two also has an unhybridized p orbital like this. So let's label those. These are just our regular p orbital, unhybridized. And the unhybridized p orbitals, they overlap as well. I'm going to color them in. The overlap between the unhybridized p orbitals also exists between the lobes, but in this particular orientation. So it actually takes place side to side. And if you notice, not along the line of the bond, but instead above the bond and below the bond. So the p orbital overlap is below the bond and above the bond, but not along the bond line. This is called a pi bond. So let me erase some things because I've got a lot of stuff written up here. We'll write up here the pi bond, which is sometimes abbreviated with pi. The pi bond is a side to side overlap of orbitals that are above and below the bond line. A double bond, which is what we have right here, consists of one sigma bond 
and one pi bond with a total of four electrons. So a double bond is one sigma and one pi and a total of four electrons. Let's take a look at another example because I know this is just like, it gets really messy really quick, um, but we're gonna look at a second molecule. So here we have a molecule with a triple bond. Let's put our hybridization trick up here in the corner, S, P, 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 D, 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 D. And let's assign hybridization to each one of these atoms and draw their orbitals again. Um, so our hydrogen atom with one area of electron density is just a S orbital. So we'll go ahead and draw that in blue about halfway down the bond line. No hybridization necessary. Second hy hydrogen atom is exactly the same, just an S orbital, no hybridization. Carbon atoms have one, two areas of electrons around them. That is SP hybrid. The SP hybrid orbitals look very much like the SP2s. So we're going to make it look like that. There's one, and then here's the other, like that. And then our second carbons, sp orbitals, like this, and this way as well. And these represent the sigma bonds in this particular molecule. So we have a sigma bond in this particular location, the sig single bond in between the carbon and the hydrogen. We have another sigma bond over here. And again, the sigma bonds are the head-to-head, -head direct overlap along the bond line. And then we have a sigma bond in this space right there as well. And that sigma bond contains one of the sets of electrons of, that exists in that triple bond. When we hybridized these uh, for the carbon atoms, we hybridized just an S and a P. So we left, in this case, we left two P orbitals unhybridized. And those unhybridized p orbitals are hanging out. So here's one of the unhybridized p orbital for each carbon atom. And those unhybridized p orbitals are going to have side to side overlap like that. And that side to side overlap is going to be a pi bond. And then our second p orbital, which we're gonna try to find a way to fit in so the second p orbital is um, on the other axis. So we've got like one axis in this direction, one axis in this direction, and one axis in this direction. So I'm going to attempt to draw that. I'm going to draw it as an angle like this. And remember, this is a p orbital. So here's our second p orbital, side to side overlap as well. So here we've got quite a bit of side to side overlap. And this is pi bond number two. This, we can see this triple bond has a total of one sigma bond and two pi bonds for a total of six electrons. Let's look at one more example, this time without drawing orbitals. For this molecule right here, um, just to kind of review everything, what we're going to do is assign hybridization to every single atom in this molecule, and then determine for every single bond how many sigma and how many pi bonds there are. Um, so I'll put our trick in the corner again, S, three Ps, five Ds. Hydrogen atoms are always just S hybridized. I'm gonna write the hybridization in red. So all of our hydrogen atoms, which always have only one area of electron density, they are always S hybrids. This carbon atom has two areas of electron density, which is sp2. And the carbon next to it, which also has two areas of electron density, is also S. I think I said sp2. They're both sp. This carbon atom with four areas of electron density is sp3. 
this oxygen atom, also with four areas of electron density, also sp3. This carbon atom with one, two, three areas of electrons is one, two, three, that's sp2. And this oxygen with one, two, three areas of electron density, also sp2. So there's hybridization assigned for everything. And now let's assign sigma and pi bonding. Single bonds, I'll do this in blue, single bonds are always sigma bonds, always. Every bond contains a sigma bond. So our sing single bonds are always sigmas. So there are all the single bonds. Double bonds are always a sigma and a pi. Again, every single bond has one sigma bond in it. Triple bonds are a sigma and two pi's. So this molecule has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sigma bonds and one, two, three pi bonds.